Welcome once again. Right now we're at Romans chapter 8, verses 1 through 17. Deliverance from sin. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who don't walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. A lot of Christians quote this verse. And you know, ironically, they quote this verse right after they sin or even worse than that, during their sin. They quote, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. And you know, a lot of people don't even know what they're talking about. They don't even know what that means. Let's talk about this for a minute. There is now no condemnation not to just any old person who makes a mental ascension of the historical facts of the Lord. No, there is now no condemnation to those who accept Jesus, you know, mentally speaking, you know, and it, they, they accept the historical facts of Jesus. No, there is now no condemnation only to those who are in Christ Jesus. It means a lot to be in Christ Jesus, to be in Mashiach in the Hebrew, in Christos in the Greek, in the anointed one. You are in him and you can only be in him if you are truly, truly born again. That means all of the old life is gone. All of the old sinful life is gone. That makes sense, right? If all of the old sinful life is gone then there's no sin in your life anymore. That means there's no condemnation for you because that sin is gone. There is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who don't walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. In other words, you're not entangled in the materialistic things of this world. You're not entangled with money, lust, power or greed. You're not ent entangled with this stuff. You're not taken by any of this stuff. You're not taken by any of the worldly things, but you are taken by the Spirit of God. You are led by God's Spirit, not by the Spirit of the world, not by the Spirit of the crowd, the going thing, the going fad, the going trends, by the Spirit of of God. You walk according to the Spirit of God. In other words, you obey the Spirit of God. And as Paul said in the previous chapter, the Spirit spoke through Moshe. The Spirit spoke through Moses and gave us the Torah. That is why the law of God is spiritual, not sinful, God forbid, not fleshly, no. You have to die to self in order to obey Torah. You have to deny yourself in order to obey God's Torah. You have to crucify yourself, figuratively speaking, in order to obey Torah. It's impossible to obey Torah and be full of pride at the same time because Torah calls for deep and utter humility. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus made me free from the law of sin and death. What does Paul mean here? He proclaims himself to be free from the law of sin. Free from sin. For what the law couldn't do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God did, sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. Powerful and very profound statement here. You see, the Gnostics, and a lot of people believe that everything that's of the flesh is sinful. That's not the case either. The physical body, the flesh, is not sinful in and of itself. It's not inherently sinful. Jesus had a physical body. And may I say, he still has a physical body. Yet he does not sin. So it is possible to be in the flesh, but not in the flesh, if you know what I mean. It is possible to be in the flesh 
and yet never sin. And that is the glory of the Messiah. That is the glory of Jesus. He was in the flesh, yet he never sinned. So John said, he said, you know the spirit of the Antichrist by anybody who doesn't profess Jesus as coming in the flesh. Because you see, back in those days, John lived when everybody was like, wow, this was like an angel. I mean, look at all of the miraculous signs he did. You know, he forgave sin and he, he raised the dead and he even risen from the dead himself. And so they're all like, this is divine. But yet Jesus came in the flesh, proving that it's possible to live in the flesh but not to follow after the desires of the flesh. Proving that it's possible to live in the flesh and still condemn sin and still live pure and holy 100%. Jesus condemned sin in the flesh that the ordinance of the law might be fulfilled in us, that the ordinance of the law might be fulfilled in us. The whole reason why Jesus came is not to do away with the law, but so the law could be lived out through us so that we could have power to obey Torah, so that we could have power to live out the ordinances of God who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit because the law is spiritual. The law is not fleshly and the law is not sinful. No way, far, far from it. The law is of the Spirit of God. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Now we're talking about materialistically here now. We're talking about materialistic things and lustful things. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. But those who live according to the Spirit the things of the Spirit. That's why it's really, really important for you to always meditate upon the Scriptures, always be thinking upon the, the ways of God. Very important. For the mind of the flesh is death, but the mind of the Spirit is life and peace, because the mind of the flesh is hostile toward God. And you know, there are a lot of hostile people in the world today, hostile toward God. They proclaim love and, you know, love is love and all that kind of stuff. But you know what? They're really hostile if you speak against their sin. They show their true colors and it's not pretty. The mind of the flesh is hostile toward God, for it is not subject to God's law, neither indeed can it be. Those who are in the flesh can't please God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if it is so that the spirit of God dwells in you. So here's the key. All you need here is just the spirit of God to dwell in you. If the spirit of God lives in you, and trust me, the Spirit of God does not live in everybody. Far from it. If the Spirit of God lives in you, then you do not walk according to the flesh, but the Spirit. But if any man doesn't have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And there are a lot of people in churches today. They stand to sing the hymns. They clap when they're supposed to clap. They say amen when they're supposed to say amen. Some of them are deacons. Some of them are church leaders. And yes, even some of them are pastors. And they do not have the Spirit of Christ. They are not His. If Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. In other words, if Christ really lives in you, you are dead to sin and you are alive to righteousness. You are vibrating, you are resonating, you are beaming with the righteousness of God, such as we read in the Torah. That's how we know what's right and wrong. That's how we define righteousness. 
But if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. I will never forget the time when I first experienced the indwelling of the spirit, when the spirit of God came in me. I never knew it was possible. What I experienced, I didn't know it was possible. It's got nothing to do with your imagination. It is real. It's the real deal. When the Spirit of God lives in you, when the Spirit of Almighty God lives in you, you don't have to have anybody tell you you're saved. You know it. You're telling everybody else you're saved. When the Spirit of God really comes in you, you you're not questioning. You, you know when the Spirit of God is in you. When the most powerful and most glorious person in all of the world, in all of the universe, in all of creation comes to live inside of you. You know it. And I remember when the Spirit of God first came in me and I could feel the breath of God coming in, just breathing in me, breathing in me. And I kept on thinking about this verse. If the Spirit of Him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He will also give life to your mortal bodies. This is talking about mortal bodies. This is not just talking about a spiritual body or an imaginary body or whatever. I mean, this is talking about the real deal. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you must die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the children of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are children of God. Not everybody is a child of God. I know that some people like to say, well, everybody is a child of God. We're all God's children here on earth. Well, that might make you feel butterflies in your stomach and it might make you feel good and all nice and warm and fuzzy, but that is not the truth. Far from it. Most of the world by far are not truly led by the Spirit of God because if they are led by the Spirit of God, they are led by the same Spirit that Moshe was led by, that Yeshua was led by, the same Spirit that gave us Torah. These are the children of God. For you didn't receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. It says here in the notes, Abba is an Aramaic word for father or daddy, which can be used affectionately and respectfully in prayer to our Father in heaven. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Wow, joint heirs with Christ. Think about what Christ himself inherited. It says we're joint heirs with Christ. If indeed, if, here's the condition, big condition here. If indeed we suffer with him. This doesn't sound like your typical TV preacher, does it? And you're going to have so much peace and you're going to have so much prosperity and yada, yada, yada. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. And in our next session, we're going to be talking about more than conquerors and what that really means. It is going to be glorious. Until next time, seek God with all, that is, all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. Call upon him, and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.